We're on WDHA's Reconnect with Rockers. I love reconnecting with um, old friends. I love connecting with new friends. I'm a fan of the Black Moods, have been for a couple years now, so I'm really, really excited to welcome Josh and Chico from the band of WDHA's Reconnect with Rockers. Thank you guys so much. It's Thank great to see you. Us. Great Me to too. see your faces. All right, so whoever, I'm just gonna toss this one out there. I always talk to bands, you know, when new music is coming out, it's tough enough in a very busy rock climate to release new music. You got a lot of bands doing a lot of things. How does one do it as a newish band during a pandemic? As if you need extra stress and pressure <laughs> on, on pushing, you know, great new music out there. Um, I don't know. Uh, we, our thing was that we, we were kind of, uh, you know, caught everybody off guard what, what, what happened because we were on the road. But we were already planning on, um, you know, uh, it takes it takes a few months to get your release. And if you're going to put anything out, it's not just like, you know, when we were doing it as kids and you just like record something and then, hey, we've got a recording. Here it is. You know, and now it's like all this, all this built up stuff. Oh, yeah. The son's having a, a good time right now. That's okay. Um, but uh, he, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> it threw me off. But um, everything was slated for release. So we just kind of went with it where other bands and stuff. You know, there was a lot of, you know, record release reschedules, I guess, but we just kept after it. And uh, we pretty much, this is the first, one of the first times we've been separated. because We, we live together and we're there all the time. So it's, uh, uh, we're always playing. So we're lucky that in that aspect that not other bands have, you know, where we, we're always together. Yeah. And we, we also, even before the pandemic happened, we are already planning on doing live streams anyways. Yeah, oh, cool. uh, just just trying to reach you know more more fans when we could, um, and so we were already having a plan for that. And then so it it's kind of weird how the timing was. It's not like we wanted to do overdrive for sure. Yeah, there's Jordan. Like, oh, hey, Jordan. Uh, it's not like we wanted any of this to happen, but you know uh, we we figured out what we can do to make you know the best of it. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? I've talked to a lot of bands, and a lot of bands feel that maybe. This is going to be a great promotional tool for them moving forward when all of this is over. You know, it's going to probably be a while, but, but people feel really comfortable, you know, just getting out there and being in everybody's faces and meeting people. Like, I'm super excited to meet you guys and to be able to have this opportunity to do this. I mean, I, I think I became a fan really with bad news. I'm not going to lie. There was just something about everything that encompassed that song, the vibe of the song, the feel of the song the darkness of the song and it got me into that belladonna record and, I, and that's when i really really became a fan of the band um so who was your first fan band like who was the the first band where you said oof i feel that right here here's my epiphany moment i'm having this clarity here as a kid um who did you first see uh chico that did that for you I can remember it actually because I grew up in Tallis on the west side of Phoenix and uh, it was mainly hip hop that I listened to and uh, I went with my buddy to a, a roller uh, rink and uh, uh, Nirvana came on Smells Like Teen Spirit yep. and I, I never like roller skated because I didn't want to fall on my ass <laughs> but I would play video games and I and I heard that song and I literally stopped I'm like what is this so I went and found what it was and uh, fell in love with Nirvana. Yeah, so that was definitely a, a palate cleansing period in music, you know, yes. where we came off the yeah. hair bands and everybody was like, what the heck is this? Yeah, where was that <laughs> go after Where that? did that Everybody come from? Like, it was like, <laughs> an apps. Right, Lord, right. It so, so, Josh, what about you? You know, I grew up around it. My dad, like, was always in bands and uh, uh, so, and when my dad would go play on the weekends, my mom would, like, be cleaning the house or, or whatever she was doing at home and have the stereo crank. So I, it was kind of always, uh, you know, I, but I, my, my moment moment, I think, uh, I heard the Jim Blossoms play Hey Jealousy uh, on, they were doing the American Music Awards or something and I was just, uh, you know, a little kid. And so I, I fell in love with those guys. And then, uh, so I started playing that. When I heard Jamaica by uh, Led Zeppelin, that song, uh, because it sounded so, it was like Led Zeppelin was untouchable. And all of a sudden when I started playing guitar regularly, I realized I could play this song and it was just, boom, my head exploded. And I was like, this is it. This is where I want to be at. This is my band, you know? Right. 
Right. I want to come back to you for uh, something you touched on. And then uh, Jordan, welcome, Jordan. I'm so happy that you're here. You're in the car. <laughs> Thank you so much. So who was your moment? Who was the yeah. best moment for you? Um, well, like Josh, um, I grew up with music too. You know, my father showed me a lot of music when I was younger, um, but it didn't really stick with me until I saw this band called uh, Our Lady Peace. Mm -hmm. I saw them live when I was, I think I was 16 or 17 for the first time. And I remember being like in awe in the stage or in, I'm sorry, in the audience. And I remember watching them and being like, I want to do that. You know what I mean? I saw them and I was like, they put on such a good show and they were so passionate that like, and I had already been playing music at this time, but it, it hit me in that moment that I was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let, let me get back to Josh. So yeah, so you love the gin blossoms. You were a fan. Absolutely. So then how do you go from being a fan to then having a member of the band? Um, well, uh, you. Like, uh, well, I, uh, I went to see because the Jim Blossoms had broken up at, at this point and I was in high school. And so the band that I was I grew up playing in, I got us all tickets to go see his new band, which was in Springfield, which is close to where I grew up. I grew up in a really small town, of like 600 people, not a big rock scene, you know. So <laughs> uh, so we went and saw him. And after the show, uh, I was kind of down because I was hoping to meet him and all that stuff. And we were w walking down the sidewalk and I was kind of kicking rocks, like pouting. And I look in the door and there's, he's standing inside this glass door smoking a cigarette. So I just had the balls to, I threw the door open and I was like, you know, Robin, I introduced myself and he kind of rolled his eyes and, but I had a cute girl with me. So he decided to come out and talk to us. I love and it. I love it. He came out and uh, we wound up getting him stoned in our van. Very nice. And do, what you can. And, do what you gotta do man i get at, it at this point at this point he's telling us to go be a doctor or a lawyer and such and not get music business but he said if i'm ever in tempe arizona to look him up so i wound up uh going to the conservatory of recording arts in tempe and he was playing a little acoustic gig where the band broke where they got their you know built where they build up and everything and so um i did that i went down there and they threw me out because i wasn't old enough and then later on uh I wanted to run him back into him because he left a note at my school that said, wanted conservatory student from Missouri, smoky van required. That's amazing. amazing. So I called it and it was him and I wound up running the studio for him after I graduated. And then the Jim Blossoms wound up getting back together and touring. And they took me out as their guitar tech. And on, uh, on my 21st birthday, I went to hand off my guitar, the switch guitars with Scotty, the guitar player. And he wouldn't take it. And I looked around and the whole band's like, Happy birthday. So my 21st birthday, I played guitar for the Jim Blossoms. Amazing. Amazing. That's, that's a very almost famous kind of story. You know, that's very much, you know, like the Lester Bangs scene in Almost <laughs> Famous, you know, where all of a sudden he's like, I don't have time to hang around talking to my many fans. I mean, and next thing you, know, you see them, they're in like the cafe. And, you know, he's giving them all the advice. So you, you need a movie, dude. You need a movie, Josh. My, uh, yeah, some of my, uh, we've got a buddy back in Phoenix. He calls me the Forrest Gump of rock and roll. Cause I always run into these weird situations. So. Love it, love it, love it. So wait, so you, this is a little strange cause you know, the rest of your band is here, but you you have a guitar and you're going to play something for us, which yeah. I would absolutely love cause people love it. They're just, the hunger for live music is like just hurting their hearts these days, you know? So, um, I, we would love to have you do something. Jam a little tune for you. Cool. Love it. This is um, Sunshine. This is our new single. Will anybody take her out? She's all made up. She's ready now. No one ever showed her how. Oh, she doesn't care, just take out now, yeah. Well, hey, now you know you never listen. Sunshine, you know you're always missing out. You're so proud. Everybody wants you now. Well, hey, now you know you never listen. Sunshine, you know you're always missing out. You're so proud. Everybody wants it now. More bodies than she can keep count 
are the pretty girls on the rebound. To be shining light out in the crowd. Oh, she doesn't care what she's taking now. Oh no. Well, hey now, you know you never listen. Sunshine, you know you're always missing out. You're so proud. Everybody wants you now. Well, hey now, you know you never listen. Sunshine, you know you're always missing out. You're so proud. Everybody wants you when she gets loose and she gets out. She gets out like it's the first time. She's so proud. Everybody wants her up all night and sleeps all day. Knock on the door and the sunshine's gone away. She's so proud. Everybody wants her now. Hey now, you know you never listen. So shiny, you know you're always missing out. You're so proud. Everybody wants you now. Hey now, you know you never listen. Sunshine, you know you're always missing out. You're so proud. Everybody wants her now. Hey now, you know you never listen. So shiny, you know you're always missing out. You're so proud. Everybody wants you now. Hey, now you know you never listen. Sunshine, you know you're always missing out. You're so proud. And everybody wants you now. You're so proud. Well, everybody wants her now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Black Moods on Reconnect with Rockers. We've got Josh and Jordan and Chico hanging out with me. I, I always want to say hanging out with me in the studio. <laughs> hanging out with me in the room, baby. It's the Zoom Room Palooza. Hey, let's talk a little bit about the state of music. I have two things I wanted to ask you. Because I love that people love rock. Like, I love when I get a call from an 18-year-old kid, say, requesting, like, a bad company record. Like, I just love seeing parents, and I love seeing when we do shows or we do a lunchtime listener thing, and we've got parents bringing the kids, or I have listeners that are 52, and then they go down to 18, and they're wearing band shirts and stuff. I think that's because of a resurgence of really the sound of rock. You know, if you've ever been to, like, a Prince concert, hey, kids, this is what the guitar sounds like. This right. is what a real drum sound sounds like. You guys are a band that I think a couple years ago started to lead a little bit of that revolution with bands like Rival Sons and uh, Glorious Sons and Greta Van Fleet that are, are finding now. And, um, you know, I'm wondering how you feel uh, about that, you know, about a band that really has that rock sound. You sound like a rock band. You sound like a rock band. There are elements of sounding a little bit alternative. There are elements of sounding classic there are elements of sounding a little poppy like on the new single you know with a little more of a pop sensibility so tell me about your feeling on the state of rock music and what has it been like you for you guys being a newish band you know moving in well we've always i mean this has been our our formula has been us three all the time you know playing rock and roll songs and that kind of thing so we haven't really changed much it's kind of everything everybody else is kind of looking around i think and getting bored with the the you know the guy sitting in their room on a computer making a uh, making a you know recording on their computer where it's like then they can't go out and play it live. You know, there's nothing. I watched. I was there's some documentary on Netflix where uh, this kid walks out with a microphone and it's just him and all the tra it's just him on stage and everything is obviously recorded. But these kids are going crazy for it. And I think now, especially probably with maybe the lockdown, people are getting kids are getting more. They're sitting down and playing guitar and all the. I love that. Yeah. I think that's helping a lot. And you got bands like Greta Van Fleet that you know that that look like they're you know 15, just screaming out these Zeppelin tunes. I think it's inspiring to the younger kids because you know, they're like they think that Greta's the ones that did it. You know. Yeah. They're right. Never, you know, <laughs> right. I think that's right. a good thing. Yeah, and the uh, uh, thing is, is like Josh said, we've been doing this forever. Like Sunshine, that song's what six or seven years old. Yeah, and and we've recorded it. I don't know how many times, and it just 
wasn't the right time yet. And yeah, yeah and, and a lot of, several songs on our record are six to eight years old, you know, and, and other ones are, you know, two, two, three years old, you know, but uh, we've been doing the same thing ever since I met Josh. It's just been a rock and roll band. We've never, we've had producers try to bring in electronics and different things, and we tried it, and it just didn't feel right. You know, and uh, and try to and like where the reason what's different about our record now is it's just us. Like our last producer wouldn't come, didn't come and listen to the show, didn't do anything of that, and and just was like immediately going to change us. We worked with a guy that was in a Wall Nation for a while, and you know how they kind of are, and like very alternative, and and it doesn't sound like a rock band, you know, and we do, and so they came in and kind of got always, in. always. Yeah. They want to get in and like, okay, we're going to do everything completely different. And we're like, no, we need to do this. And that's how this record came about. And that's why it's, you know, so good. And so, uh, we think it's so good anyway. Yeah, no, I, 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 and you should. You know, there's an authenticity. I, there's always authenticity with certain artists that I see when they cross my desk and then ultimately cross my ears, you know. And I definitely, definitely uh, sensed it with Black Moods, you know. And then I started digging deeper into the catalog and being like, wow, these guys are a rock band and it doesn't yeah. really matter what if you have a, a certain style that you like better you know you guys can really click all the boxes check all the boxes off if you will and i yeah. think that that is really um you know the sign of a great band good tunes obviously you know regardless we always need songs songs are important you guys have some some great songwriting and of course the live show and you guys you know um are like road dogs you know road warriors out there all the time and then i read this quote which has to be BS. Did somebody tell you guys, like, I don't think you're a radio band? Did I read that? <laughs> yeah, I read right. that somewhere. That's insane because I think you are a radio band. So who, you don't even have to tell me, you don't want to, but where did that come from? You're not a radio band. That's crazy. That was our, that was our last label. We were signed uh, with uh, another label at the time, and our management and our label were both like, we're not going to go. <laughs> you tell him, Finn. Hey, yeah, tell him. <laughs> He's mad now. He knows. He gets it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they were, it was our old management, and they just, nah. <laughs> he wants to be in the energy, too. It's fine. He wants to be in. I don't, I, that's fine. Uh, but our last label <laughs> and everything was, uh, they were just like, no, the naysayers. They, their whole thing, when we put our, our record out, Medicine, when that thing came out, yeah, they're like, uh, you guys are gonna be road warriors. We're gonna break the band by touring because you're not a label, or you're not a radio band. You know, well, maybe the next record. And so Chico and I look at each other and like, uh, we'd be gone, please let us out. So we asked, we asked to get out of our contract. And that, that was like pulling teeth, but eventually we got out and we found a label that believed in us and we went for it and and nothing like making a record and having them say oh oh maybe the next record it's like well, <laughs> yeah record we have a record right now we have a record right now that's crazy when i read that quote i was like uh, you know but i've heard that about bands like i heard that about another one of my favorite bands that somebody once said to like rival sons and i was like you don't think those guys are a radio band? Like I've been at the radio station a long, long, long time. Mm. We, our listeners love, listeners love authenticity. Like I mentioned, they feel when there's a feel, they want a feel, they want an experience. That's what they want. So that's why, you know, you wanting to be able to perform for us today, you know, it's a, it's a big deal. People want that experience. They want to feel something when they listen to music. Yeah. And you can tell, like, like I said, you can listen to like, say a Justin Bieber track or a Rival Sons track and tell like this one's obviously like one dude sitting behind there and he's like, oh, that beat sounds good. I'll put that in there. Or, and everything can be done in laptop versus an actual band, you know, and hear the tones and, and hear the difference between three guys in the bedroom or three guys in the rehearsal room versus one guy in a bedroom making all the, all the beats, you know. Now, I love I love a three piece. I'm a sucker for like a three piece, a power trio. Like I love a band with three members. I think it's I think it's the fiercest um, noise ever. Like you know, yes. two guys, three guys. Right wow, there's like two, three guys in that band. Amazing. So what was uh, the Arizona music scene like for you guys? Was it welcoming? Was it encompassing? Was it tough? Was it? Is there not a scene? You know, I'm not from that area, so I don't really know. Um, what was it like? You know, being in your home and making music there was a scene when we started out i think you know 
and then it kind of I don't know what do you think Chicago there it was a, there's there's some good bands there but I think it kind of well well I grew up, I grew up here so uh, I started playing in bands when I was in high school and it's always gone like this or yeah. goes up and down you know it always goes like that um, and so there's been some great talent there's some great talent out here now and and uh, you know last uh, last winter, I was a judge. There's a, a thing called School of Rock out here, uh, but for Alice Cooper, Alice Cooper School of Rock, something I can't remember the exact name. But anyway, there was a, a, a talent contest, and I was one of the judges. And um, you know, I saw probably 15 to 16 different acts. Some solo artists, some of them were full bands, and they were all under the age of 20. And I was blown away by some of these some of these kids. Um, some of them not so much, but you know, some of them were just like why aren't you famous right now? You know what I mean? But so to answer your question, it goes like this, just probably like any, any uh, other. Uh, I, I think any, any city has that, you know, where sometimes it's a, you'd be like, wow, this is really hot scene. And then sometimes it's really quiet. We have that here in New Jersey too. You know, we've got flourishing areas of great live music and then it kind of goes quiet for a little while and then it kind of picks up, you know, mm -hmm. for a little bit, but yeah, it's great when you, step into that kind of a role too. I've done it with the radio station and it's very in, invigorating because you look at these young people and you're like, oh my God, they do get it. My uh, faith has been restored. You know, they're, they're <laughs> in those homes I'm like, wow, well, yeah. oh my God, they get it. They get it. Oh, this is so good. This You, you go home with this great feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also haven't been, we haven't been a local band in I don't know how long, you know, because we're, so when we go back home, it's usually, for just a couple of weeks at a yeah. time and then yep. we're back on the road. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're not really too hip on what's going on right now, yeah. but all our friends are still back there, you know, chugging away. We just, we just, we work, we work 24 hours with this. So there was just, we couldn't just stick around the local scene. You know, we had yep. to break, out. we had to break out. We had to get, come and see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I heard you guys are always on the road and always touring and super busy and stuff. Um, so Josh, would you do one more for us before we, uh, Thank Absolutely. You. I didn't know what the sound is like. Can you hear it okay? Is it? Oh yeah, I'm Thanks. loving it. I feel All like right. my own mini concert here. This is yeah. awesome. I'm great. It's kind of weird because the camera keeps clicking around, and so when I look up and I see Jordan staring at me, it's really funny. That I usually don't play for these guys. He's like the silent <laughs> co-conspirator in the corner there. I like it. Like like they're judging me, watching me judge. Oh, me. I am. I'm recording oh, this whole thing right now. We are. Oh, yeah. totally I'm judging you. I've got notes going on right now. <laughs> this is a song called Bad News. I've been watching you and everything you do. How you impress your friends. I should be one of them. I should be your friend. I see you checking in, so I'll be stepping out. I want to see your face. I hope it's not too late. Well, I'm starting to shake. Bad news. I got my eyes on you. Bad news. I got my eyes on you. Eyes. Eyes on you. Eyes, eyes on you. I know I turned you on. It's like I'm reading your mind. I know you what to say. I know you will be mine. Oh, it's just a matter of time. I know you will be mine. We're starting the night. Bad news. I got my eyes on you. Bad news. I got my eyes on you. Eyes. Eyes on you. Eyes, eyes on you. These images burned in my eyes of you. Every time these pictures lies for you, 
and Chico, uh, such a pleasure to hang with you. It felt, I feel like I've known you guys like forever. I feel like I was just hanging. The only thing that was missing was alcohol. I feel like I, I <laughs> hanging out in a bar with my buds, man. Thank you guys so much. The new record is Sunshine. And uh, best of luck. I can't wait till we're all able to do this together. You guys got to come by the station, do what? some kind of cool like promotional like listener thing with us. Um, sure. So we don't have to do it via computer screen and we can all get together and give like a big giant rah. Yeah, we're sure, oh, man. But cool. thank you guys so much. The Black Moods, uh, guys, if you're home and you're looking for some phenomenal new music to listen to, the real authentic bands, man, the bands that'll rock your face off and rock your pants off and rock your socks down, uh, these guys definitely a band to check out. And thank you for being on Reconnect with Rockers with me. Thanks for having us. Bye, thank guys. you, Jerry. Thank you very much. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Advantage Contracting and by Karis Lock Company.